Yo, what's going on guys? Today we'll be looking at the newest class added to the game, which is Rune Slayer. Rune Slayer being the newest EX2. It is the upgraded version of Ninja. And if you guys have ever played Ninja, you would know that it's a lot it's a lot packed into that class and Rune Slayer is no different. You may also note that my extended mastery skills are low because I did have to EMP this class and well, that sucks. The first skill we'll be looking at today is Rune Weaving. Rune Weaving is the main skill from Ninja. If you guys have any experience with Ninja, you will know this. If not, what it really packs down to is upon using this skill, you will get a prompt or a menu where you will have four elements, fire, water, earth, and wind. Hitting these elements two times in any order will give you a different effect. Now, as I mentioned, any order, that means that water and fire will have a different effect from fire and water. So keep that in mind that you, the order of which you hit these skills is very important. Now, unlike before with Ninja, we now have a way to see what each skill does easily. You can just click on the effect here and you can learn each skill. I'm gonna cover the ones that I find the most important as not all of these skills will be used a lot personally, but I feel that I should cover most of them. Now, with uh, the main four elements, they have a little basic gimmick where hitting the element twice will give you their usual basic effect. For example, hitting fire fire will give you one fire circle and some regular nuke. That could be applied to every other main element water earth and wind you probably notice here that there's now a two fire circles now upon using the first ability you would gain one fire circle now if you have two fire circles you gain another ability an upgraded ability which for example for fire would be you gain boost to fire attack and the armor effect the way to gain fire circles are kind of hard. Um, there's a, a one way through the class weapon, which I will talk about in another video. And there's also another way through Ogying. I will talk more about that when I get to support skills. But do know there's more ways to gain circles other than hitting these um, combinations of fire, fire, water, water, earth, earth, and wind, wind. But I will go over them now. So with hitting water twice or right, having two water circles, you would gain boost to all allies water attack, switch element of damage taken to a uh, superior element. Now what that means is it reminds me of the uh, effect from the Zeno's sword. It's the same effect as the switching whatever element you take to the element that you're strong against. Now with earth, earth, you would gain boost her all allies earth attack and multi attack rate this is pretty good skill for a way to boost earth multi attack rate but i wouldn't rely on it too much because the game circle is kind of hard currently wind to wind you gain uh boost to all allies wind attack and skill specs i think this is the worst one honestly you probably never end up using this there's not that many nukers in the wind. Melissa Bella is one of them. Scatch the other one. CFA I don't really count as the nuker, so I don't think that's gonna be used too much. Now you can note here with light and dark, they're a little bit unique because they don't have their own element in this um, square. I guess they have to be combining with two different elements. So you can see there, you combine fire and the wind not wind and fire keep that in mind if you hit wind and fire you will get a different effect you have to hit fire and wind fire and wind will give you light circles so with light circles you gain boost to all allies attack and mirror image effect and for dark you need water and earth with that you would gain boost to all allies dark attack <coughs> my fault and boost to charge attack specs meaning your charge attack damage and your charge that your charge attack damage cap up now that's pretty much the best one in terms of damage is the the dark one 
If I had to rank them, I'd probably go with the ones that be in most use, the Earth one, Dark, uh, Water for some meme video, <laughs> and, and then Fire. And then Wind is the lowest, and Light. Light is like, mm, situational. Now, Spell Combo for Fire and Earth boosted your party debuff resistance. I don't think that's going to be two used. It's for two turns, by the way, so... Uh, I don't think that's too important. One I would think it's very important though is with the combo of water and the wind, you restore all allies HP. That's a 2,500 boost to your all your allies for a heal. Um, I think that'll be used pretty commonly. Not that commonly though, because you may well play Sage, but if you're in trouble, it's a free heal. Though you do have pots and stuff like that, so maybe not. Now, spell combo, earth and fire is the most common one. You may see the little clip of it on the side. This is hit to foes, elemental defense down, 25% defense down. That's the best combination personally, and it allows this class to cap defense down. So it's very versatile with that. Another combo that I find to be very good is wind and water, hit to foes, element attack and fury inferior to caster element meaning that if your caster is water it would hit fire attack down and if your caster is fire it would hit wind attack down now the next combo being wind and fire boost to all allies um charge bar gain and boost to all allies triple attack when using a special attack when the foe uses a special attack that means uh a charge attack Personally, you're probably not gonna end up ever using that like, ever so it kind of remind, reminds me of Medusa's effect But the boost to triple attack is not what it would gain you would gain charge bar I believe on Medusa's Spell combo earth and water now this one's pretty decent. It's at it's a clear you remove one debuff from all allies and on top of a clear you gain a boost to debuff sex rate so it may be useful for that combo Personally, though, you may end up using uh, Elysion. It, it does the clear thing and debuff success rate better, personally. Now, you can see here that fire and water gives you instant charge attack. It does not require any circles or anything, so. But if you do have one circle, you gain boost to all allies critical hit rate. Um, It's okay. I don't think it's that good because you can use Splitting Spirit to get charge attack instantly. So you may, you're not gonna really end up using this unless you like stamina, I guess. Earth and Wind, you gain um, hit to accuracy. Accuracy mean that they can miss Ogies. Um, I think that's too inconsistent to be used a lot. It lasts three turns, no, two turns. So I don't think it's that good. And that's Earth and Wind, if I didn't mention. Water and Fire, um, you get Cold Cage. Cold Cage, the effect that is from, what's it called? Summer Makula. So, if I believe correctly, Cold Cage could be one or two turns. I don't know if, if it's like that in this game or on this skill, but it should be one or two turns. It's like a Paralyzed effect, if you're wondering. So that could be used kind of. Actually, I realized the game, that it did, this, this is the only paralyzed skill we have. Before with Ninja, you had the option of getting 20% paralyzed. I guess they removed that. Now here, with the wind combo, wind and earth, you gain revitalize and uplift. This is probably gonna be the most used one out of these four because you get more Ogi. It'd be good for an Ogi based team. Now, you have to have a wind circle to get that. With no wind circle, you only get revitalized. But I think this is really good for like an Ogi based team with the Ultima Katana or something. But that's all of them. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. I know. I spent nine minutes just talking about that. Golly, man. Um, I hope you guys appreciate that. <laughs> my, my lord. Now, on to the skills. The <laughs> This is going to be a long video. Now, with 
this class we do get new skills the first skill being spell booster spell booster is kind of like your replenish skill you use it to gain back magic circles now keep in mind that you have to have a magic circle already to regain that magic circle for example if you only have fire water and wind and for example let's say it's two one two you will only gain one water you don't gain any more remember the cap is two and you only gain back what you have so and it does consume 20 uh 30 percent charge bar and it cuts down ruined weavings cooldown for two turns Well, that was awkward. My OBS actually ended up crashing on me. So uh, I do hope you guys forgive me for that, for the little jump cut there. But uh, the next skill we'll be looking at is Mana Burst. Mana Burst is a big damage to all foes based on how many magic circles you have. So the more circles you have, the more damage you do. It caps around like 2 million, 1.8, somewhere around there. So it's not a bad skill, just a basic nuke. I don't think it's that good, honestly. You To get a lot of magic circles is really hard if you're not playing with the class weapon. So this um, skill is not that good without the class weapon. So keep that in mind. The next and last skill we'll be looking at is Dragon's Break. Dragon Break is a very cool, very cool skill. Now, bonus damage effect to all allies Damage is based on a number number of magic circles on caster. So depending on how many circles you have, it will consume all of them and give you bonus damage in return, maxing out at 80%. Now this is the only a one turn effect. So you're mainly using this for a one turn burst. The best example would be Esser's skill four, Neo skill four. You're trying to combine this skill with one skill to get maximum damage. Honestly, you're probably not going to be using this skill a lot unless you already hit really hard. It's only going it's a one-time thing. It's, it's pretty much like a Siva. Think of it like that. Think of it like Siva for it's a one-time thing. You're not you you have to give up a slot for this very powerful skill if used properly. Now, since it requires a lot of magic circles, it it's best used with the class weapon. Without the class weapon, you're not going to really get the best benefit out of it. So keep it in mind when you are using a skill that you definitely want to have the class weapon on to gain as many circles as possible. Now with the support skills, you get you have increased to main character uh, boost to element attack effect. Um, that would be something like Ultima or anything like that. So. Not bad, not bad. Now, with the second support skill, Elemental Charge, you gain one magic circle of the same element as the main weapon upon using charge attack. As I mentioned before, there's other ways besides the uh, class the class weapon. This is the other way. So every time you Ogi, uh, whatever element your character main character is, so let's say your main character is fire, you would gain a fire circle. Even with that, that's still not consistent enough. Keep that in mind. On pawn maxing out this class, you do gain 10% uh, triple attack and 24% uh, double attack, which is pretty insane when you think about it. It's not bad, not bad. But that Rune Slayer, I try to keep it concise as this is really a lot to talk about for this one class. Uh, if you enjoy this do give it a like thank you appreciate it uh let's get to a fight with it and we'll just see how it goes now there's two things i want to preface before i start this fight one i'm going to be using the class weapon in this video because a lot of the skills on magic knight base around magic circles and the only way to get them reliably is with the class weapon so that's very important that's why I'm bringing the class weapon here. Two, because this video is so long, I'm doing Medusa. I will be doing another video with the purpose of explaining the class weapon and its quirks, and it will be a harder raid because that video won't be a mouthful of talking. So, 
look out for that. That video will be out tomorrow. As long as Dragalia Lost does not take away my life. <laughs> Hopefully it does not. Now, with this boss, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want to get debuffed. <laughs> I really, really don't. <laughs> now, I'm going to go with the basic uh, scale. Oh, whoa, oops. My fault. That one hit defense down. I'm mainly just going to be using Magic Knight to hit defense now, currently. I'll try to use other skills next time I use it. When I do a video on it, I'll try to use the more awkward skills. Though, I don't think they're really practical. Honestly, I don't think they're practical at all. One thing I will note is that Scat works really well with this weapon. Because you get the, per the element attack up consistently. And this weapon does have a really cool passive. One thing I will mention though, is, I mentioned though, is that you don't gain the bonus damage from her passive. So, you win some and you lose some. Feels bad. I'll try to Ogi here if I can. You see that I gained the magic circle on my Ogi, so now I can use a different skill. Will I? Probably not, but I can. That effect right there, the Grimnir effect, that is because of the Cloud Weapon. But, you know, I'll talk more about that another time. Uh, this. As long as he doesn't wake up, I'll be very happy. <laughs> I'm actually kind of winded talking about the class because I did end up messing up a couple times. I was actually kind of dreading this class coming out <laughs> because I know it was going to be really, really hard. Now I'll try to use another skill here. Let's use uh, Wind to Wind. Get something else out of here. So you can see that the skill damage is up now. And we're going to combine it with the nuke from this here. Don't I don't recommend doing that because of Coma. But for the video, I felt that it was, it was the right thing to do. I guess the, I guess the game agreed with me, so we, we didn't lose Coma somehow. So, as I mentioned with this class, the 80% uh, bonus damage, it's really RNG to get the the skill lineup you want. Because I'm, I'm trying to get more circles if I can, so I can maximize the... Uh, the bonus I would get. But I'm, not, I'm not getting the, the luck I want. Because the circle you get with the class weapon is random. So that's, so that's kind of annoying. Hopefully. Wait, this went down one, but we didn't finish our turn. What? Huh. Weird. We got all the turns out of it. So we're not going to get the maximum here, but that's fine. And we'll just finish it with uh, Ogi. Or not, because I'm bad and I forget. <laughs> it's okay, we have backup plans. We don't need CS8. <laughs> Backup plan OP. But yeah, I do apologize. I'll be doing another video with um, more focus around the class weapon. I didn't want to talk too much about it this time. But I did want to showcase the skills in action. The class is very pretty though. That's one thing I would like to mention. Definitely very pretty class. 
But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you didn't like the way I did it, just leave, leave a comment and tell me what I did wrong. But I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.